Good evening, I'm Daniel Anthony and you're watching Kinney Flash. As far as I can remember, this year's haze is definitely one of the worst we've had in recent years, with thousands of schools being forced to close last week and over a million students made to stay at home. But now it looks like we're starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel, in the form of the monsoon transition phase. With it comes the certainty that the air quality in the country will improve. Even today, the Kuala Lumpur skyline looks visibly clearer, but the damage has already been done. Thousands of Chinese nationals have reportedly cancelled their holidays in Malaysia and instead chosen to holiday in other ASEAN countries. So how big of a hit did the tourism industry take over the haze? That is a question for our tourism minister. Um, I, I don't have exactly in my hand now. Tada. Tala banyak. Kalau banyak tak datang, kerugian tak lah banyak. Sikit ya. Tak, 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 tak. Dan juga kerang pun macam saya cakap tadi, ni jerbu pun dah mula baik. So, I think um, pulih semula lah. Mereka akan datang. The minister then looked at the sky and assured reporters that the situation is improving, so there is nothing to worry about. Mereka yang apa ni, um, yang tangguh perjalanan uh, holiday mereka ke Malaysia tak banyak sangat, tak banyak sangat. Itu pun berlaku berapa hari yang lalu apabila semasa jerbu kita menjadi teruk. So while Malaysians can expect to see clearer skies in the days to come thanks to the monsoon, the same cannot be said about our neighbours down south. A haze emergency has been declared for the Riau province in Indonesia as the Air Pollutant Index or API has exceeded the 500 mark. Riau Governor Shamsuar declared the emergency status beginning yesterday until the 31st of August. Following the declaration, about 280 students in Pekanbaru and Jambi, Indonesia will be evacuated according to the National Disaster Management Agency. Of these, 160 students will be brought back to Malaysia while 120 will be evacuated to the Malaysia Hall in Jakarta. The passing of the late Tanjung PI MP Dr. Muat Farid Muat Rafiq has rendered the parliamentary seat vacant and now Barisan National Component Parties are jostling for a chance to contest. MCA's Wee Jek Seng, who contested in GE14 and lost to the late MP, said that he is ready to give it another shot, but AMNO is also lobbying for the seat. However, in Pakatan Harapan, there appears to be a consensus on which party is going to contest. Uh, is the MP confident that Pakatan Harapan will retain the Tanjong PI? Which party should Harapan feel in that area? Tanjung PI. Tanjung PI tak ada kaitan dengan DAP. Tanjung PI bersatu. I mean, uh, as the capacity of PMP, do, do you confident that Pakatan Harapan will retain that area and which party should Harapan put into that? Tadi saya dah jawab itu Tanjung PI bersatu, bukan DAP bersatu. If you expected drama inside the courtroom where Perak State Executive Counselor Paul Yong's rape trial went through case management this morning, you will not be surprised to hear that there was also drama outside the Ipoh court complex where Yong supporters staged a protest against Perak DAP Chief Nga Kho Ming. <laughs> There was a rift in Perak DAP after Nga told reporters that while Yong was only taking leave from his state government position, Pakatan Harapan would be discussing the matter further based on quote current developments. Following this, Yong's lawyer Leong, who is also Perak DAP deputy treasurer and the party state assistant secretary Liao Tai Yi, both quit their post over Nga's statement. Liao subsequently called Nga a dictator and accused him of rigging the Perak DAP elections. He also demanded that Nga resign. Yong is accused of raping a 23-year-old domestic worker at his residence on the 7th of July, which he has denied. Our national car has a newly refreshed logo and I say it reminds me of a certain animated series involving cats and thunder. At the unveiling ceremony in Subang this morning, the firm's chief designer Aslan Othman said the logo resonated with Proton's image and ambition to become a global brand. First question Meanwhile, Proton CEO Lee Chun Rong said the company aims to make 400,000 cars by 2027. 
uh, the new logo will be on the uh, XMD CKD. This is the first question. The second question is for our outlet. Our outlet will change gradually based on the international practice. Usually we will spend two years to change all locals, but we will base on priority to do. Now we take a look at international news. Firearms and protests don't go well together. It's usually a disaster waiting to happen. And to make things worse, what if the person with the gun is a politician? A legislator from Haiti's ruling party fired a handgun during a protest on Monday, injuring a photojournalist as anger rises over food and fuel shortages in the Caribbean country. Footage from Reuters shows Senator Jean-Marie Ralphedier stepping out of a white truck near Parliament in the capital Port-au-Prince after several protesters yanked open his passenger side door while gesturing and yelling at the lawmaker. Fedier, wearing a black suit, jacket and jeans, pulled out a handgun and then fired several shots, sending a cluster of people around his car fleeing in all directions. He then got back inside the vehicle which sped out of the parking lot. We are enduring a situation that is unbearable and horrible. We are here to finish it off. The situation in Haiti is not easy. Companies have closed. Schools are not operating. Children are at home. It's a horrible situation. A dispute between Haiti and a U.S. energy trading firm has caused power blackouts and fuel shortages in the nation of 11 million people, causing anger at President Jovenel Moise's government. When asked about the incident, Fethier told Radio Mega that he acted in self-defense. The waves created by the melting ice sheets due to global warming will be massive, but for now, we're being hit by the waves created by a teenage Swedish girl. Teenage activist Greta Thunberg angrily denounced world leaders on Monday for failing to tackle climate change, unleashing the outrage felt by millions of her peers at the heart of the United Nations with her resounding statement, How dare you? This is all wrong. I shouldn't be up here. I should be back in school, on the other side of the ocean. Yet, you all come to us young people for hope. How dare you? You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. And yet, I'm one of the lucky ones. People are suffering. People are dying. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction, and all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you! The Swedish campaigner's brief address electrified the start of a summit aimed at mobilizing governments and businesses to break international paralysis over carbon emissions, which hit record highs last year despite decades of warnings from scientists. Inspired by Turnberg's solitary weekly protest outside the Swedish parliament a year ago, millions of young people poured onto the streets around the globe last Friday to demand governments attending the summit take emergency action. And before we wrap up, ladies and gentlemen, here are some other news highlights from today. And that's all we have time for, ladies and gentlemen. For more stories, log on to kinetv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, and Daily Motion for the latest news. I'm Daniel Anthony. Thank you for watching.